In this video, I'll talk about the basic views of focused cardiac ultrasound or the FOCUS. A phase direct transducer, also known as a cardiac probe, is used to image the heart. It is a low frequency transducer, which means it can penetrate deeper. And the piezoelectric crystals are arranged in the center of the probe, which gives a pie shaped image. The screen indicator or the orientation marker is on the right in cardiac preset as opposed to abdomen preset and vascular preset where it is on the left side. But regardless, it still corresponds to the orientation marker on the probe and uh, it depends upon um, in what direction you are holding the probe. When talking about focused cardiac ultrasound, we hear these terms windows and views being used interchangeably. But in reality, a window is something, a space in the rib, uh, rib cage or around the rib cage which you are using to visualize the heart. And there are multiple windows through which you can visualize the heart, like parasternal window, suprasternal window, apical window, and subcostal window. And from each window, you can slice the heart using ultrasound in multiple planes and views. To better orient ourselves to the basic cardiac views, we need to understand the anatomic orientation of the heart and the planes uh, in which you can slice it using ultrasound. So the long axis of the body is vertical like this. However, the long axis of the heart, which runs through it, uh, its apex is oblique to the long axis of the body. And that's why when you are slicing the heart in its long axis or the sagittal plane, it is oblique to the body and that determines how you are holding the transducer. And you can also slice the heart in its transverse axis, which is about 90 degrees to the sagittal plane and you can slice the heart in its coronal plane from the apex. The first view is the parasternal long axis view. Parasternal means it's adjacent to the sternum. So you place the probe adjacent to the sternum in third or fourth intercostal space with the orientation marker towards right shoulder and that way you will slice the heart in its long axis or the sagittal plane. And this is how parasternal long axis view looks like on ultrasound. Um, in the anatomic image, you can see that the probe is placed anteriorly and the first structure that is it is encountering is the right ventricular outflow tract, this one here. And so right ventricular outflow tract or the RVOT is on the top of the image. And as, you, as the ultrasound beam goes deeper, you have left ventricle and things that enter the left ventricle, that is left atrium, and thing that leaves the left ventricle, that is the aorta. And aorta, you can see here, here it is towards the right shoulder. So your probe orientation marker is towards the right shoulder. That's why aorta is here. And this is away from the right shoulder. So left ventricle is uh, here. So left ventricle is away from the screen orientation marker. That's how you orient yourself to the image. So let's see the labeled image. You have right ventricular outflow tract here, left ventricle, uh, left atrium opening it to the left ventricle. And this must be the mitral wall and left ventricle opening it to the aorta. This is the aortic wall um, and here is the cross section of the descending aorta. More pictures to uh, better orient ourselves to the parasternal long axis view. Here is the MRI image um, uh, of the heart in its sagittal plane. The probe is here in the anterior aspect of the chest and the ultrasound beam is going like that. So RVOT is the first thing that the probe, uh, the ultrasound beam encounters and you have left ventricle, left atrium and the left uh, ventricle opens into the aortic root. And here is the anatomic drawing of the parasternal long axis view. Here you can note that the, you, you typically do not see cardiac apex in the parasternal long axis view. In parasternal long axis view, you can get an idea of the left ventricular systolic function and if there is any gross dysfunction of the mitral and uh, aortic walls. And you can also see if there is any gross chamber enlargement such as right ventricular enlargement or if there is any aortic aneurysm or the left atrial enlargement. And the next view is the parasternal short axis. From the parasternal long axis view, if you rotate the probe clockwise 90 degrees with the probe orientation marker uh, towards the left shoulder, then you would slice the heart in its transverse axis and you would get a short axis view. So here is how heart looks like in its uh, short axis view. You have a round LV and a relatively crescent shaped right ventricle. So on sonographic image, this is the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle. 
And these things here are papillary muscles. And there are different levels of transverse views of the heart where you can go to the mitral wall level and aortic wall level, but the papillary wall level or the mid ventricular level is considered to be the home base um, of the transverse view, which gives most of the information uh, that is required for basic uh, focused cardiac ultrasound. And uh, because you can see the whole uh, left ventricle in its cross section, you get a better understanding of its radial uh, function and if there are any regional wall motion abnormalities. And uh, uh, both in parasternal long axis view and short axis view, you can assess if there is any pericardial effusion. This bright area is the pericardium and you can see if there is any fluid accumulating in between the pericardial layers. And this is also a good view to look at the chamber enlargement. For example, when the right ventricle enlarges, the interventricular septum becomes flattened and the left ventricle becomes like the letter D instead of a circle. The next we use the apical four chamber. So to get this view, you place the probe where um, you would expect to see apical impulse of the heart. And from there you slice the heart in its coronal plane. So it's usually uh, maybe fourth or fifth intercostal space. Though this uh, illustration um, shows you that the probe is here medial to the nipple. In, in reality, in most patient, patients, it would be um, lateral to the nipple line. And this is how sonographic image of the apical four chamber view looks like. Uh, we are imaging the heart from its apex. So that means ventricles are close to the probe. That means ventricles are on the top of the image. So you have uh, ventricles on top and atria at the bottom. And how do you know which is left and which is right? Your orientation marker uh, is towards the left shoulder or somewhere around uh, two o'clock and three o'clock position. So because it's left, the le these chambers uh, in the direction of uh, orientation marker must be the left-sided chambers. This is left ventricle, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium. Normally, the left ventricle occupies about two thirds of this image, whereas right ventricle occupies about one third. And this is also a good view to uh, as a tricuspid wall here and mitral wall if there are any vegetations or if there are any gross uh, valvular regurgitation. And uh, if RV gets enlarged, you can compare the relative size of the LV and RV and get an idea of um, whether the RV is enlarged or not. And from the apical four chamber view, if you tilt the probe slightly anteriorly, that is towards you, you will uh, see the left ventricular outflow tract. In the, in the four chamber view, you are just seeing mitral wall uh, and tricuspid wall here. There is no outflow tract, but the outflow tract is slightly anterior. So that's why you tilt the probe anteriorly. So beside the mitral wall, we find this left ventricular outflow tract and the aortic wall. So this is the inlet of the left ventricle and this is the outlet of the left ventricle. So left ventricular outflow tract is considered to be the fifth chamber. And that's why this view is called the apical five chamber view. So in this view, uh, you can see whatever you are seeing in the apical four chamber view. And also, because you have the LVOT, you can place your pulse to your Doppler sample volume here to get an idea of how the blood is flowing. And uh, based on that, you can quantitatively or semi-quantitatively estimate the stroke volume. Because whatever the blood is going through the LVOT must be the stroke volume, right? And the final view um, of the basic uh, cardiac ultrasound is the sub xiphoid four chamber. So here you are looking at the heart from the abdomen, in the, from the sub xiphoid area. So you will, your probe will encounter the liver first. So liver is on the top of the image. To obtain this, you place the probe in the sub xiphoid area because you have to look up into the chest. So you, you press the probe little harder uh, so that it, it, it becomes little oblique and not exactly perpendicular to the abdominal wall. And the probe orientation marker is uh, towards patient's uh, left. So essentially, except for the parasternal long axis view, rest in uh, rest of the uh, three views, you have your probe orientation marker towards patient's left. Okay, um, this is how sonographic image of the sub uh, sub xiphoid four chamber view looks like. You have liver on the top because you are imaging the heart through the liver, and uh, you have uh, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. Obviously, the chambers that are adjacent to the liver must be right-sided chambers. So these are right-sided chambers and these are left-sided chambers. Essentially, it almost like, uh, looks like a apical four-chamber view. It's just that it's slightly tilted because of the direction of the ultrasound beam. 
and also you don't see the apex uh, clearly in most of the uh, subsulfide four chamber views and you also have this uh, uh, ivc view that you obtain from the subsulfide plane so instead of orienting the probe marker towards patient's left if you orient the marker towards patient's head then you would see ivc uh, or the inferior vena cava in its long axis ivc is a tube that carries blood to the right atrium so it appears as an anechoic structure um, and it's entering the beating structure here which is the heart and you can also see that the hepatic vein is joining the inferior vena cava when you want to measure the diameter of the ivc and assess the collapse this is where you would uh, assess uh, just below the junction of hepatic vein and the inferior vena cava and it's always good to visualize the ivc in its short axis also from the long axis view of the ivc if you just uh, tilt the probe 90 uh, rotate the probe 90 degrees with the orientation marker towards patient's left then you would see aorta to the left uh, towards the orientation marker and the ivc here embedded in the liver you can compare it to the anatomic uh, image here so we have ivc within the liver aorta is outside the liver to the left and hepatic veins go and join the ivc there are three main hepatic veins in this image you can nicely see all these hepatic veins going towards the ivc and in the middle you have the vertebral body bones give shadowing on ultrasound so you just see vertebral shadowing here so that finishes the basic cardiac views uh, thank you and happy scanning